All right, welcome back. In this video, we're going to go over Kaimo chips in part two. Given that this is a part two video, I highly suggest you watch the part one video because this is going to make no sense if you didn't watch that one. So I highly suggest you watch it. Please watch it. I'll link it in the description and I'll put like a card or something on the video so you can see it. Anyways, let's pick off where we left off last time. So the molecule on the left here, we have our, os our aspartate group and our histidine. And here we have an acyl group that we formed. So that's where we left off. So now we're here. A random water molecule is going to come into this reaction now. And histidine is going to deprotonate it. There are lone electrons on the nitrogen of histidine. And this is going to come and attack the water molecule, the hydrogen of the water molecule. So it's a random water molecule that just appeared out of nowhere. And what's going to happen, it's going to break off. And the, basically, the hydrogen is going to bond to the nitrogen here. Now, the lone pair of electrons on the oxygen here is going to attack the acyl group. When it attacks the acyl group, it's going to bond to the carbon. But notice if that happens, we're going to have carbon will have five bonds. One from the oxygen, two from the double bond, one from the R group, and one from that. So that's not allowed. So what's going to happen is this bond is going to go up here. And oxygen is going to have three pairs of lone elect of three pairs of electrons. So we just formed a tetrahedral intermediate. Don't worry about the arrows for now. But when this happens, so now we have four bonds, carbon has four bonds, one from this basically what was the water, the R group, this right here, that came from the serine molecule, and now this oxygen. Now the oxygen, well, this tetrahedral intermediate is very unstable. We talked about oxyanion holes, and they're basically amides in the active site that make it so the tetrahedral intermediate basically doesn't implode. It keeps it stable just for a second, a very brief second. So this molecule is very unstable, but this oxyanion hole is protecting it. Just for a second. But eventually it's gonna collapse. So the electrons, the lone pair of electrons are gonna create a double bond. What's gonna leave then? Because we carbon cannot have five bonds. If you have a double bond here, then we have five bonds. Well, what's going to happen is this serine molecule is going to leave. And what's basically going to happen is the alkoxide, this is the alkoxide right here, is going to join in with the histidine. So it's going to separate. So this is going to separate. Now, when that happens, we create a carboxylic acid. So this, when the, when the serine molecule or alkoxide left, we left with the carboxyl group. And this carboxyl group is going to go leave. It's going to leave the molecule. We're done with it. It just floats away into nothing. I mean, it, not, not nothing, but, you know, it, it floats away. We're done with it. And notice, we're back to the starting position. We got our aspartate, we got our histidine, and we got our serine. And that's the end of the reaction. So notice that it looks all same as step right here. Step one, same thing. It's the same molecule. So what we just did is just create a carboxylic acid in this reaction from water. So that is basically it. That's the chymotrypsin mechanism. So remember, enzymes are reused. They're never, bro they're never broken down and, you know, into nothing, right? They're reused. So we just rebuilt the enzyme here. So we got a product and we got our enzyme back. And that right there is the chymotrypsin mechanism. That's it.